Hey everybody, this is Brett. Welcome back to School Sucks Live. Sitting in the studio in Manchester tonight with Corey. Hey, ooh, go ahead, try that. That's two ooh, segments in a row. Hey. My goodness, amateurs. All right, and on the phone with us, Larkin Rose. And we are getting ready to discuss Larkin's book, The Most Dangerous Superstition. And we are doing this along with our coverage of the Argumentum Ad Vericundium, the appeal to authority. Mm. Now, there's little examples of this, little fun examples, like Bob has questions about evolution. Right. Or Bob doesn't like the idea that people have questions about evolution. So Hmm. he says that he knows a scientist who also questions evolution. Uh That's an appeal to authority. But, oh, Larkin, it gets so much worse than that, doesn't it? (laughs) Absolutely. Mm. To me, to me, one of the biggest giveaways that somebody's doing the appeal to authority routine is, well, I'll start a discussion and they'll quote somebody saying something, and I'll say, okay, that's fine, but how does that apply to this, or what about this exception, or what about this? And they say, well, I don't know, ask the guy I just quoted, which shows me they don't understand things, they're not thinking things out, they just, they remembered something that somebody else said, right. And if they can't, if all they can do is, is quote the other person and they can't, you know, they, they can't even respond to any sort of cross-examination or, or objective analysis of the actual quote, it's obvious that they're trying to do that cop-out. I think the reason people do appeal to authority is it's a really convenient cop-out because, hey, it's not me. Don't argue about me. I'm quoting somebody else. So go argue with him and and I, I don't have to, you know, I don't have to argue anything or prove anything or have any thought involved. I can just quote somebody who says something I like. People also frequently use it to uh, not not just to bolster their own opinion, but to tear yours down. Like, well, you know, I think my pastor knows a little bit more about <laughs> evolution than you. So, <laughs> right, right, yeah, they they'll use like the rank of the authority of the person they're quoting as if, ha ha ha, you. You think you could know something that he doesn't? Yeah. And and again, it comes down to, you know, if the if the authority is actually right about something, then evidence and logic will back him up. It'll match. You know, if what he's saying is the truth, then you can demonstrate it by evidence and logic. To say, well, I don't have to rationalize anything or show any evidence because this important guy said it. Yeah. It's just the ultimate intellectual cop-out. Like, no matter how complicated it is, if the guy is right, and no matter how you know important he is and how many credentials he has, if he's right, then th- somewhere there must be some evidence and logic backing up what he has to say. And if you don't have that, if you just have a quote from some important guy, then you have nothing. I'll tell you what, though. If the guy that you're arguing against, or even like the person who is being defended by the person you're arguing against, if that person wins a Nobel Prize, it is so over for you. Yeah, <laughs> there is no greater appeal to it. Even authority. though they just give those away to anybody, <laughs> they to no. murderers. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> I think the most every, you ridiculous know, prize ever. If 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 that if that's going to happen, I think we should all just get a Nobel Prize at birth. Exactly. <laughs> right. I can say stuff. Uh, be nice. Do I get one? So Larkin, if somebody new is totally joining us and uh, you know for the first time tonight, and they're listening to this, and they just heard me call the president of the United States a murderer, they're shocked. So I think before we go on with this conversation, it would be uh, helpful for us to give the thesis, or as you call it, the punchline in the most dangerous superstition. And you said you have a copy of the book. Yep, I have it right here. So I'm looking for like the be- imagine. Uh, the middle, <laughs> the middle of uh, the start on page two till about the middle of page three, if you wouldn't mind reading that for us. Yep, will do. And this is how the book starts. So this isn't like giving away the the end of a exciting story <laughs> or something. It starts with the punchline. Right. Starts as follows: How many millions have gazed upon the brutal horrors of history, with its countless examples of man's inhumanity to man, and wondered aloud how such things could happen? The truth is, most people wouldn't want to know how it happens because they themselves are religiously attached to the very belief that makes it possible. The vast majority of suffering and injustice in the world, today and spanning back thousands of years, can be directly attributed to a single idea. 
It is not greed or hatred or any of the other emotions or ideas that are usually blamed for the evils of society. Instead, most of the violence, theft, assault, and murder in the world is the result of a mere superstition, a belief which, though almost universally held, runs contrary to all evidence and reason, though, of course, those who hold the belief do not see it that way. The punchline of this book is easy to express, albeit difficult for most people to accept or even to calmly and rationally contemplate. The belief in authority, which includes all belief in government, is irrational and self-contradictory. It is contrary to civilization and morality and constitutes the most dangerous, destructive superstition that has ever existed. Rather than being a force for order and justice, the belief in authority is the arch enemy of humanity. Of course, nearly everyone is raised to believe the exact opposite, that obedience to authority is a virtue, at least in most cases, that respecting and complying with the laws of government is what makes us civilized, and that disrespect for authority leads only to chaos and violence. In fact, people have been so thoroughly trained to associate obedience with being good that attacking the concept of authority will sound to most people like suggesting that there is no such thing as right and wrong and no need to abide by any standards of behavior, and no need to have any morals at all. That is not what is being advocated here, quite the opposite. Indeed, the reason the myth of authority needs to be demolished is precisely because there is such a thing as right and wrong, it does matter how people treat each other, and people should always strive to live moral lives. Despite the constant authoritarian propaganda claiming otherwise, having respect for authority and having respect for humanity, are mutually exclusive and diametrically opposed. The reason to have no respect for the myth of authority is so that we can have respect for humanity and justice. Excellent. Thank you. So before we go on, and before any discussion or examination begins, I like to make sure that we have our terms defined nice and clearly. So on page two, you're using the words government and authority interchangeably there. And I'm wondering, is there such a thing as legitimate authority? And you seem to hint at that's where you're going, that yes, there is some kind of objective standard. But what is it? Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, and the book then goes on to make the distinction and, and define the difference. There is, because people use the term authority in a bunch of different ways, like they'll talk about the the authority on wombat mating or something, sure. which is somebody who knows a lot about something um, or supposedly knows a lot about something. And then people use the term authority in a situational sense. Like I had the authority to go get the purse back from the, the thief and give it back to the old lady. Um, but the authority that I'm talking about, and in the book I, I very specifically define this is what I'm talking about is the right to rule and the meaning of government i'm talking about is the the group of people who claim to have the right to rule other human beings so this is the irrelevant appeal to authority when we get back we're going to get into the book a little bit more but i want to ask if there could be such a thing as a relevant appeal to authority not a logical fallacy this is school sucks live we'll be right back it's the onion 